morning guys uh, well I'm back from the Pathfinder gathering and uh, I spent the uh, Pathfinder gathering working for Trinity Saner at her um, booth for made ready gear and she sells pouches and custom pouches and things like that and uh, had a really good time got to see a, one, a wonderful bunch of people and uh, got to meet a lot of instructors and uh, just oodles and oodles of people and no I don't have a lot of footage of it to be honest with you um, I spent more time talking than I talked I kept saying I was gonna walk around with a camera and to be honest I just never did I was so busy dealing with people talking to people uh, sharing and things like that I just didn't get the chance but what I did do is pick up a lot of new toys while I was there I did some shopping and that was the thing so we're gonna over the next few days I'll bring up different things that I picked up while I was up there new toys and we'll we'll talk about them okay but today we're gonna talk about um, something I've been wondering wanting for a while now and I got an opportunity to handle it and then I got an opportunity to pick one up so as most of you know I'm a big 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 fan of WC knives okay and so my blackbird is my knife. I mean, that's just if tomorrow the you know world went to poo poo, that'd be the knife that I'd be carrying. Um, it's an extension to me. That blackbird is just it. You know that prototype. I'm that's me. And so I carry it everywhere. You know, uh, I use it in the kitchen. I use it everywhere. Well, in talking with William back for the last several years. I talked about wanting a small knife, okay, because there needs to be, I believe in layers, as you know, I believe in transitions, and so the right tool for the right job, okay, and there is no perfect knife, because a perfect knife is for the perfect knife for this job, but it's actually the wrong knife for this, this, and this job, see, so it's the knife you have is your survival knife because it's the only knife you got, and picking the right tool for the job. Well, I want a small crafting knife to be used in game prep, be used in small carving stuff like a carving knife, a whittling knife, a small knife. And I saw William had created something like that, and I've been wanting one of these things for a while. And so I went over, and Randy Smith of StitchGear.com is a dealer. So we had some at the Pathfinder gathering. Now that's the sheath made by Randy. This goes in a haversack. Now it's also a clip on your belt. You can slide it in the pocket and clip it on your belt. Like that. There's something small and out of the way. But to me, this is going to go in my haversack. And what I'm talking about is the Mini. The WC Mini. That is, is like an extension of your thumb. And there's several small knives out there now like the uh, Eldris and a few others that are a handle with a short blade. Now as Dave Canterbury calls these out of uh, Scandinavia, a sloyd knife. It meant woodworking knife, wood carving knife, small crafting knife. But look how small that is. How easy that is to handle for getting in tight and doing precision stuff like wood carving. Like doing, you know, fancy cuts on radishes and stuff to sit them out on the plate, make them look snazzy. Things like that. I love my big belt knife. Don't get me wrong. That is the field knife. That is the woodcraft knife. And I can do just about everything with it. But there are times that I want a small knife. And I've been wanting a WC small knife. Well, this is it for me. Now, this is AEBL. And as you know, there's only supposed to be three people in the United States that's figured out the secret of AEBL, and William Collins is one of them. And so it's a type of stainless, so it ain't gonna rust when I leave it in the haversack a while. It can do bloody jobs like cleaning, gaming, etc., and it's not gonna get, you know, rusty on me. But at the same time, it sharpens easy. It's got that nice wide bevel on it to make it easy to sharpen in the field, and it'll slice real easy. Matt Mercer's got one of these, and I watched him several times during the weekend carving trap pieces and stuff like that. And I mean, just it's like the tip of your thumb. 
it's just the right size for the job. Now these ran well. I got mine for two fifty from uh, Randy Smith at StitchGear.com. He's a dealer. So if you're wanting one, I'll put the thing down in the description box. We can go ask Randy. I don't know how many more he's got, or he he puts in orders. So if you're wanting a mini, Randy might be able to get hook you up. It's got a good 90 degree spine for the shaving and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, like I need another knife. I know. But man, I've been wanting one of these. I really have. So, that's today. That's what I want to talk about today is the mini. I love the way it's got... It's hard to see that on camera. Okay. But it flares and it tapers up into this hole. And that perfectly fits your hand. I mean, when you close your hand, it's like it, your hand is, it's like you're holding hands. That's the only way I can put it. It's not like you're holding something round in your hand. It's like you're holding a hand. It completely contours to my hand. And I picked that thing up and I fell in love. And I looked and I went like, okay, I need another one. And this one I got to hide because if I don't hide this one, Mrs. Blackie will have this in the kitchen. We've already got like four in the kitchen. You know, but as soon as she sees this, this will become the paring knife and etc. and I won't get to see it. So this one stays hidden in the haversack. But that good leather sheath like that and it's snug fit. It ain't coming out no matter what. Usually I'd change out this lanyard for, uh, lanyard for some orange paracord. But I think I'm going to leave the letter on this because it is so tight in that sheath even the grip that little bitty nub is a little snug and little not a lot to grab so you can grab that knot see and you get a lot more pull on it so i'll leave it on there for right now but back to the pathfinder gathering um it was unusually cool weather um they were saying that the high was going to be 78 on thursday 78 in july um, and from what we saw, it was in the low 80s, something like that. I was shocked. You know, a July event, you expect to just dive heat stroke. But we, it was a cool front that had come down, and it was right on the edge of, the, of our site, literally, because you got all the Great Lakes to the north of us, not very far away, actually. And so you would have, like, this undulation of that front line where the uh, jet stream is what, of course, on this side is the cool and on this side is the warm moisture up from the Gulf. And so if it drifted over us, it got muggy, temperature went up a little bit. When it drifted down, it got cooler. We had a little sprinkling of rain ever so No heavy storm, but it was a little rain here and a little rain there where you could, you know, you weren't going to get soaked being out in it. It'd be just a drop or two here or there. We were right on that boundary line as it went back and forth. Uh, really clear nights, most nights. Uh, I think there's two nights there it was cloudy. Um, it was just a good gathering. It really was. There was a lot of people. You could go out and, and visit and et cetera and have plenty of time to get to your classes. Oh, the thing that... Um, being from down here in the south, whenever you get up in that part of the country, especially in July, you're right there close to the summer solstice, which is in June 21. Um, sun don't go down till late uh, from my southern point of view. So at like 9.45 p.m., you're still seeing light spots in the sky. You know, yeah, the sun's down and all that, but at 9.45 p.m., you could still see bright spots in the sky that were enough you could, you know, see to walk around out here. If there were no lights or nothing, there was no moon, you'd see enough to be able to walk around. And then the sun's going to be back up, you know, well before 6. And so it was like you lay down and 1, 2, 3, it was daylight again. And... uh it took me a little bit to kind of adapt to that because it's like, okay, I'll get some, what do you mean it's daylight again? <laughs> you know? Oh, it, we, uh, it was really interesting. I enjoyed it. But there's going to be, um, I've got a little bitty rack, a Pathfinder rack to go inside of a bush pot. I'm going to show you that. 
I got one of the Wazoo uh, baseball caps. It's got all the pockets in it, so you can put some survival items in it. I uh, got one of those. I got, what else did I get? Because I got several pieces of gear. Oh, um, from Bombproof Bushcraft, I got one of the uh, folding buck saws. I'm going to show that. That's going to be very handy. That's going to go into a car kit for me. But I think it's going to be a great addition. Uh, from Possum Pouch, I got one of their tops to make the three-legged stool for a quick carry in the field. Uh, you make a chair right quick. I'm going to do a demonstration on that, on how to do that. Oh, what else? There's several. I just, man, I was doing as much shopping as I was doing anything else. I was getting out and wandering around and, you know, uh, and uh, get to see stuff, get to see. That's one of the reasons I enjoy going to these big events is to see the vendors, you know. See a good vendor that's got good quality stuff. Um, and I got a bunch of canteens. Um, the vendor directly across from us who carries all kinds of stuff, and he had the big Boy Scout canteens, antique, like goes part of my set. I got a two-liter for that. I got a... Uh, the rectangular pack canteen. It was my very, very first Boy Scout canteen, one like that. And then I've also got a World War II uh, aluminum canteen with the old black lid on it to go with my Model 1910 Calvary cover that I've already got right now. I got my Nailgene in there. Nailgene's a great canteen. It's a better canteen, but it just don't look right. I want to put the correct canteen. So that's something for my collection. There was books, there was gear, there was just, you know, lots of people. And uh, it was a really good time. Well, guys, I will uh, be posting more videos this week, but I want to let you know I'm back. Now, we've got a tropical depression. Or they haven't declared it yet, but basically that's what we got right here on the Gulf Coast, right below me. And so they're expecting it to form into something that's just going to pour, pour, pour rain. So I may have to do some indoor videos because it may be raining like three inches, you know, three to five inches a day out here, which is typical for the southeast during this time of year whenever you're getting a wet monsoon type summer where we have just wave after wave after storms coming off the Gulf. But we shall work through it. Thank you very much for supporting my channel, guys. And thank you very much for all the stuff that you do that allows me to live this life and to bring and make these videos for you. I truly do appreciate every one of you. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.